Recording in progress, cool. Okay, now I'm gonna go through some of the call reminders. Uh, we go through most of these every single cohort call, but we go through them in a little bit more depth in the first call, just to make sure that everyone gets it. Um, oh yeah, and Ola Seven, hello. I'm so happy to see you. And this is the seventh cohort we've been running over this training. <laughs> I just used my executive mute powers. It is absolutely fine to unmute, um, but we just try and prevent background noise because when we have 25 people in the call, sometimes it can be really hard to hear if someone else's chicken is crowing in the backyard. Um, but yeah, anytime you want to speak, unmute, chat, or use the, um, what's the word? Chat, uh, type, do typing. I am clearly strong and awake and coherent at this time of day. Um, so yes, going back onto our basic reminders. Um, so this will be on YouTube. Um, breakout rooms do not go onto YouTube. Those are private. Um, so you may feel comfortable having your camera on in the breakout rooms, even if you'd rather not have it in the big call now. Um, on the top left of my screen, I think you can probably see something that says Otter AI, click here to open live transcript. If you do that, then um, it will allow you to follow along 95% correct what's being spoken. Um, so we find that this is useful if you're hard of hearing. Um, some people say maybe if they have ADHD, it helps them. Uh, and other people um, may say my English is better when I read than when I listen. And so they can follow along with any of those. Sometimes it makes very funny mistakes. Um, uh, so I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, no, we're good. Um, so the Otter AI um, is, is here for you. You don't have to use it, but you can if you wish. But one thing to note is that we don't have Otter AI in the breakout rooms. Uh, so in order to make sure that everyone can participate, we offer some of our breakout rooms to be spoken and some of our breakout rooms to be written in the chat instead. Um, and in order to allow us to sort you into those breakout rooms, um, what I'm just going to ask everyone to do now, if you can, I know not always everyone can, but if you can, um, open the participants window in your Zoom. And if I go to my name and I click on more on the blue more button and click rename, I can add S in front of my name if I prefer a spoken breakout room, or if I prefer a written breakout room, I can add W in front of my name. So I'm just gonna pause and ask for as many people as possible to choose one or the other. Um, if you can't, then we will try and message you and check what you prefer and we will help you out with that. So don't worry too much if you can't for any reason. Um, thank you to everyone who is adding those. Uh, looking good. I'll pause for a moment or two more. Uh, so S for spoken and W for written. And you are heroes. There may be a few more to come, uh, but don't worry if you can't. Okay. Um, I think we've got that, and uh, the, has the Etherpad just massively changed for anyone? Oh, oh, she's the top. Okay, sorry, I had a random panic. <laughs> um, we're good, we're good. Okay, um, scrolling down to the right place. Where am I? Um, all right, so hopefully by now most of you have signed in on the roll call. If not, there are more spaces on line 67 and 68. Uh, we have some icebreaker questions. I can see more people have shared the songs that are, are getting them going at the moment. We have Ra Ra Rasputin by Boney M. We have Candy. Um, I'm looking through you since Sunday. I don't know that song. Um, and more, I, I want to break free. And one very French that I don't try to pronounce because I will say all of the silent things wrong. Um, Matt, it's looking fantastic. So thank you, everyone. Um, and thank you, everyone who's adding those in at the moment as well. This is fantastic. Whew, okay, I'm running out of air. Uh, let me make some space for other people to talk instead. Uh, Malvika, do you want to introduce the lightning roundtable? Because I always do it wrong. I can totally do that. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Malvika Sharan, and uh, I would like to hear who you all are. So there are two options, of course, if you're 
mic is not working, if internet is bad, if you feel most comfortable, please your, use your chat to introduce yourself. But what we will be doing is uh, going through each person and we would give a artificial cookies for everyone who'll keep it short. So tell us your name, where you're joining from, your project name and your recent hobby. So I'm gonna demo that and please do keep track of it. I am Malvika Sharan, I'm joining from London. My project is Open Life Science and my most recent hobby is to go to places in London that I haven't seen. And I'll pass the mic to Meli. Hi everyone. Uh, well, I'm Meli, I am located in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I am actually a mentor for the folks that uh, work at the project Laconga Physics. Um, and my most recent hobby, I'd say maybe finding out new playlists on Spotify and new artists. I will pass the cookie to, let's see someone here on the screen, uh, Nikki, are you there? Nikki was in, in written mode. So here in the chat, it says Nikki London, Project Extensible Notebook for Open Science on Specimens. Hobby cooking. So next would be Angelica. Um, Angelica, we either can't hear you or uh, maybe you're typing. We will circle back to you, don't worry. Um, and please, if you are typing, just put it in the, um, what's the word, <laughs> chat. I'm sorry, my brain is not full power today. <laughs> uh, so next is, um, is it Julienne? It's possible that I'm using a wrong sheet. I'm definitely using a wrong sheet. So please, I apologize. Uh, I'll make sure that I'm following the right sheet today. So I'm gonna pass it to Paz and, and make sure that I'm adding the right name. Paz, please take it over and then uh, please keep an eye on the chat. Sorry, uh, I got distracted with uh, one of the messages. Pass, uh, my project is OLS. Uh, my hobby, most recent one, I would have to say rescuing street dogs. And... Yeah. I wish that was not my hobby, but you know, it is. Uh, um, yeah, next is Diana. No, Diana or Aman? Well, I can be first and then Amon can be second. Uh, so my name is Diana. I'm from Estonia and I'm my project and my project is to make uh, data management materials for Estonian University. And unfortunately, I don't have much time for a hobby unless you count raising kids. So the only thing left is reading books. Uh, all right, I'll go next. Uh, hi, I'm Aman, and I'm joining in from, from Manchester. And my project is the Undergraduate's Guide for, uh, for Research Software Engineering, which is my continuation from OLS 6. And I'll also be facilitating in this cohort. Uh, what else? My hobbies. My hobbies, cooking maybe, because yeah, this is my first time living alone. So I'm cooking to survive. and that's that's a hobby that I have. So yeah. Uh, next is Nikki, I think. Uh, eat it. Oh. Okay, eat it. thank you. Hi everyone. Um, I'm Ida. I'm joining from Argentina, and I'm. Uh, with 
CESI and PATRI in mapping open science communities, organizations, and events in Latin America. And my hobbies are cooking and gardening. And I think that's it. Um, the next one, uh, uh, I got lost. Jessica? Yeah, Jessie. Thanks. Uh, my name is Jessie or Jessica, and I'm also from Argentina. And as uh, Irene mentioned, we are together with Patricia and uh, mapping open science communities and organizations and events that uh, take place in Latin America. And um, I, I'm not sure if it constitutes a hobby. I'm starting to cook because I need to eat better. So I'm not having fun doing it, but I have to be. So the next would be uh, Danny, right? Danny's mic is not working, I just realized. So the next person, I'm keep, I keep losing my running order. Aditi, then Jennifer, then Aswati. Hi everyone, my name is Aditi. I'm joining here from Exeter, UK. And my project is on creating an open science platform for humanities and computation and social science. Um, and my hobbies, I, I actually have a lot of hobbies. It's basically like, I like to do whatever catches my fancy. And also one of my hobbies is doing absolutely nothing. So <laughs> I don't know if it makes sense at all, but yeah. So the next one, I think, is Jennifer, is it? Yeah. yeah hi. hi, Jennifer Miller here, um, North Carolina in the United States. And uh, I'm on the Translate Science Project. Um, a hobby I've been trying recently is called Visible Mending, um, where you mend clothes, but in a way that it's still, it's visible that you mended them. Aswati. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Aswati and I'm dialing in from Ireland. I'm currently mentoring the folks investigating the in impact of sleep, sleep deprivation and my new hobbies are needle felting and uh, sea, sea swimming. And I think next is Kiara. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Carol. Uh, I'm from Ireland, but I'm living in Denmark at the moment. And my project is about developing a proteomics database for snake uh, venom. Um, and I guess my recent hobbies, um, I have a dog, so I really like going for walks with my dog. And next is Carmel. Hi, um, I'm Carmel. I'm dialing in from Cape Town, South Africa. Um, I'm working on a project uh, with colleagues um, called Radical Inclusion. Uh, we're looking at inclusion at academic conferences. And um, two recent hobbies that I've started, two very different ones, uh, surfing and um, playing uh, Settlers of Catan. Ariana, Siobhan and Petra. Uh, hi, I am Mariana. I am from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, even if I am Italian originally. Our project is called Closer to the Sky. I'm doing it also with Claudia, who is connected now. And I think uh, one of my recent uh, hobbies is drinking tea. Siobhan has um, introduced herself on the chat. Siobhan is based in the UK, uh, working on a project called Radical Inclusion with Carmel and recently been writing Baby Beanies. That sounds amazing. I think we have Petra as the last one. Folks, if your name hasn't been called out, please um, add it in the chat and we'll have you next. Petra. Hi everyone. Good evening from Cameroon. Uh, I'm Petra. Petra again. 
uh, my project is uh, liveorient.com is a platform to uh, reduce or stop the confusion in career and orientation for literally everyone from small to adults if you're doing career switch and all of that uh hobbies i love cooking and uh there's this particular thing i really love is um community engagement i love talking at community events i love getting people into community events and all of that just all this organizational stuff so you find me there i'm i'm really excited to be part of OLS called serving thank you all um have i missed anybody oh yeah so i see Mariela, then Claudia, and then Patricia. Hi, everyone. I'm Mariela. I'm from Argentina. The name of my project is uh, Open Educational Hands-on Tutorial for Evaluating Fairness in Classification of Artificial Intelligence Models. And my recent hobby, I don't know if it's right how to say it, is crochet. Right. That one. <laughs> and next, I think it's Claudia. Hi, hello. My name is Claudia. I'm Italian and uh, I'm uh, from the south of Italy, joining you from Rome. I work with uh, Arianna on the Closer to the Sky project. And my recent hobby, I think, is trying to organize my time with a um, bullet journal because I tend to get. Uh, into too many side projects and uh, that can get out of control sometimes. And we have last Patricia. Oh, Patricia has bad signal. Patricia, please use chat to introduce yourself. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, if, if at all you didn't have a chance to share a lot more than you would have wanted please use slack slack is one of the best places to connect you're going to see that people love interacting we love interacting we love hearing from you um, and you might not have chance all the time to speak in the main room but we will be putting you in breakout room and i'm going to pass it to you for the next part of this call Excellent. Um, so I noticed that I accidentally deleted the link to the next presentation from our notes, but I'm fixing that right now. And we are on line 120. So you have an idea now of who we're talking with. We've, we've seen a lot of beautiful faces. We've had a lot of little introductions. I am especially cheering for the preemie caps just because my niece is a preemie and I've just been knitting and crocheting nonstop, making little things for her. Um, and you should add cat ears to all of your preemie hats is my, my special instruction here. Um, I have a cat problem. If you don't know this yet, you'll know this soon. Um, right, okay, I'm gonna do the whole hello and welcome to OLS. I've got the slides up now. And right, let me do the sharing, share screen and Oh, no, no, if I do it, I'm going to do it wrong, aren't I? Ooh, cancel, how do I cancel? X, slideshow. And... Right. Can you see my slides? I've got a thumbs up. Fantastic. Okie dokie. So I'm just going to move the little Zoom windows to stop blocking everything. Hello. Hola. Shalom. Um, that's all I've got for now. Um, I'm sure that ho I hope that these represent your language. If they don't, we should add it. Um, but you've probably figured out we're really happy to have you here with us. Um, so this slide introduces uh, some of the OLS team. I'm Yo with the awesome hat there on the coast of Arco um, with the Mediterranean behind me. Uh, the other four people, um, we have Berenice Batu, um, Malvika Sharan, uh, who is here. Um, and Emmy Tsang, who is one of the, we're all the directors of Open Life Science, and Paz Bernardo is one of the OLS community members. Um, I, one moment, I have had a family member arrive. Okay, right, we're good. Um, sorry, we're uh, living very, very close to one another while I'm visiting my sister at the moment. And she, my, my, my brother had just gotten home and then the dog said, woof. Um, 
Uh, okay, right. Where was I? Yes. And Paz is one of the OLS staff members. We actually have grown by the team and are working on a contract right now. This diagram is going to get even bigger, which is absolutely delightful. Um, so uh, anyway, what is OLS? One of the simplest ways to put it is that we believe that research, I've said science, but really research should be shared with people. Like that's the point of doing it, right? We need to make sure that other people can use it, reuse it, um, and help each other build on each other's shoulders and make it freely available. Um, I don't particularly want to, to um, lie in a shareholder's pocket, and I also would rather that we don't accidentally just leave it on someone's hard drive and then that computer dies five years later and the science is gone. So it's really important that we actually share the work that we do. But as a team, uh, it's not just those five people you saw. There's more than 400 people who have been through the OLS program in one way or another. Maybe they've been an expert speaker who's presented in a call like this. Maybe they've been a mentor. Maybe they've been a mentee. Maybe they've been a call facilitator. Uh, like I think Melly and Aman are examples of people who are helping us facilitate calls at the moment. Um, maybe you've been many of the above, um, and we would not be anywhere without the beautiful team of people that has helped us get where we are and is helping us continue to wherever it is that we're going, which I am sure is somewhere awesome. Um, and we're really happy that we've added your number. We're probably more like 450 now that we're adding all of you to this team. Um, thank you for that. We aim to help both individuals and groups to become a science, open science ambassadors. What we mean by this is we're looking for a multiplier effect. So um, maybe you are learning a bit about ways to make your research open today, um, but next week you might be sharing it with someone else. Um, so it's not just about skills that you apply to your own work, but a way of living that actually you can help other people do as well. Um, and we we have to share. We believe that's the only way science will advance if we can prevent from reinventing the wheel over and over by not sharing. Um, interesting. I am not speaking in French and I'm curious what just happened there. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else got the pop up saying that a participant has just set the speaking language to French, but my French is. I don't even know how to say bad in French or I would have tried it. Um, so. Um, in science, people are often afraid about sharing their work. Maybe, you know, they're worried they're going to get scooped, that someone else will say, ha ha, I take this and now this is my work, or they publish it just before you. Or a very, very human fear. What if someone says my work is wrong? Um, it's terrifying when you put yourself out there, um, but we try and build ways to make it so that you don't have to like suffer and feel vulnerable and struggle with it. Um, and we, look at pathways to make it accessible, to make it easy for other people to contribute to what you're doing or for you to contribute to what other people are doing. Um, because we don't want people to feel vulnerable as scientists, as researchers, as scholars. Um, so together we go through a lot of different concepts and ways to do that, to practice open research behaviors. Um, and the reason that we say when you apply that you have to have a project is because we want you to have something to apply it to. It sticks a lot better if you practice it um, rather than just learning it and then you forget. Uh, and the example I always use here is that I have trained about four or five times as a first aider. Um, but very rarely would anyone like, you know, have blood come out of them straight after I did my training. And then I have to requalify in two or three years because I've never practiced it and I don't necessarily remember it all that well. Um, so by being able to apply this to the projects that you're working on, we hope that it's going to glue in into the brains and into your day to day life just a little bit better. So we um, we have a combination of hands on practice, the cohort based training, which we have today, um, as well as the one on one mentoring, which just sort of helps glue those two together. So you might learn something in a cohort call one day and then you might want to speak to your mentor and say, but I don't see how this works for my project, which is fine. We don't expect everything to be one size fits all. And maybe they can help you or maybe they'll say, yeah, I agree. Maybe this is one that you don't need to do. Or maybe they'll say, actually, why don't you try this? Um, so the one on one mentoring tends to be quite, quite nice, quite helpful because it's someone who's not your boss. They're not your supervisor. They're just there to help and to be a brain outside of your brain. Um, and we will talk every now and then about Mozilla because um, OLS was born from Mozilla. They have what they call an open leadership framework, which is a set of guidelines um, of different ways to work that help you build openly with community. Um, 
So this is one of our favorite sentences. It's that open leaders design, build and empower their projects and communities for understanding, sharing, participation and inclusion. Um, and we emphasize different parts of all of those underlined terms at various different points throughout the cohorts. So um, this is the framework. Uh, there's more to it than this, but this is just sort of a quick overview. So we talk about different ways to understand the work that you're doing, to share the work that you're doing, and to have people participate and feel included in your work. And then the other side of the framework, we design for it, we build for it, and then we try to empower the people who are doing it. Um, and at, again, at different times, we'll highlight different parts of the boxes and say, this is the area we're covering right now. Um, anyway, what can open research mean? It can mean so many things. And um, this is a long list, but it is only a partial list. Open data. This is one um, where, let's say, you've done an experiment in the lab. You share those results openly so that other people can reuse and interpret your work. Maybe you have open source code where you are, maybe you're a programmer and you've been writing some, some really fancy stuff to a, a model of supernovas, maybe. Or maybe you um, uh, you don't consider yourself a coder, but you have copied and pasted some R from Stack Overflow. It's, that can all be open. Doesn't matter what size or shape your code is. Maybe you're making physical things that you want to share the designs for so that other people can make them. And that's open source hardware. Um, sometimes people conflate open research with open access um, and open access is the ability to get written papers or protocols, um, but there's a lot more to open research than just open access. Um, but I think in, in, unless we always have the opposite problem, we sometimes forget to talk about open access uh, within open research because it's the, one of the most common ones that's thought of. If you share your results early, um, you know, as early as you sensibly can. That's usually a preprint. Uh, maybe you, when you're reviewing those papers, you share your review openly. Um, maybe you train people um, and you make sure that your education is open or um, that the materials are open. Or maybe you work with people um, out in the field, with the public, um, citizen science, participatory science. There's lots of names for it and I never find the right one. Um, but there's lots of different ways to work with people without being inside the ivory tower. Um, and we also talk a lot about networking. Uh, I think it's one of actually the, one of the more valuable things about OLS is the chance to meet with people, to talk with them and to find different ways to collaborate and get ideas and opportunities. Um, so that's a lot of the things that open science and open research might mean. Um, and now another core concept of OLS, I think I'm nearly done now, so don't worry. Um, yeah, open by design. And what we mean by this is don't let open be something accidental, but be intentional and thoughtful about the way that you open things. Now, there's many, many different ways to interpret this concept. Let's unpack a few. One here, this is a study. This was of tech companies, but it found that if they had strategic intent in their openness, they were more likely to perform in the market. Um, some of us may be doing tech. Many of us here may not be doing tech. Uh, so another one that I will include is that um, you want to think carefully, like, should I open this? Maybe I shouldn't. Um, plan very carefully. For example, if you have medical records, you probably don't want to be sharing those. Or maybe you have an um, animal conservation um, and you don't want to tell everyone where to go and poach that last rhino. Um, so being very conscious and thoughtful about your openness is as important as opening and sharing what you have. Um, so yes, design openness into your work and don't let it be a thoughtless default. Um, I also like to say, if, if, if you build it, they will come. It's a common phrase, but actually that's not always the case. I mean, sometimes you might have something exciting where if you build it, they will come. But very often, like I know certainly my undergrad uh, thesis work, I put all that code online and that was the last thing that ever happened. Um, and that's fine. I, I didn't want the burden of maintenance um, on running servers and updating my actually quite dodgy code, let's be honest. Um, but if I had wanted anyone to come, they, they weren't going to be showing up. I would have had to do a lot more work and a lot more thought into how I'd get people involved in using my code and running it and updating it. Um, and that's a lot of what we're going to be talking about um, over the next few cohorts. So um, we do this with you, all hands in. Uh, we want to train to change culture. We believe that um, especially uh, early career researchers, but really anyone 
we have the power. The more we spread this, the more the more we carefully think about what we do and we show the positive impact that it has, the faster that we can transform culture for this to be a norm, uh, a conscious and thoughtful more norm, but nevertheless a norm. Uh, and that is me. I have run out of all the air and quite honestly could use a tiny drink. Uh, so I've stopped sharing. And what is next? Um, oh, my etherpad has just reloaded. <laughs> Does anyone want to save me while my etherpad is thinking? <laughs> yeah, there's a very interesting conversation happening on the etherpad. And um, I think we're already moving towards like deeper, meaty conversation. And it says that if open research is more inclusive term for open science, and I'm I'm just adding a context that a lot of humanities and social sciences researcher would not relate to science as a field that they work in. They would relate to research as a field. Uh, Nikki is asking, what is the equivalent for citizen science? Um, mostly because someone have commented that, you know, citizen somehow implies, implies to the legal citizens and nationals and uh, can exclude illegal immigrants or refugees. It's a very, very useful conversation. Don't know you if you have an answer if it's something we bring back i've just seen so many i've seen people say that um, participatory research is too ivory tower and i've seen people say citizens has i don't i'm just like yep all these terms are good they all have flaws if you find a perfect one please let me know <laughs> thank you any other question for you No, in that case, are we going into a breakout room and you, you're introducing it? Thankfully, my etherpad has finally stopped panicking and it has reloaded. Okay, my lovely, lovely friends. So if you've been following along on the etherpad, hop over to line 137. Um, so I will spend a moment or two just introducing how our breakout rooms run. In the meantime, um, Melissa is kindly uh, helping by sorting everyone into rooms based on the spoken and written instructions that you've added. Um, so I'm just going to add a quick reminder now as well, um, especially if you uh, arrived a little bit later. Um, so if you would like to participate in a breakout room, that's a private discussion room that won't be recorded. Um, and if you'd like to speak in your room, put S in front of your name in Zoom. If you prefer to write in your room, maybe you're in a hotel, maybe you have a crying baby, maybe um, you are hard of hearing, anything like that, please put W in front of your name. And that way we sort you into a group with other people who want to um, communicate using the same method. And if you can't, don't worry, we will ask you or we will <laughs> automatically assign you, but we will figure you out. <laughs> um, so breakout rooms effectively work as um, small individual discussions where the, the, not everyone is in the same big room, groom, groom, group or room like this. Um, they don't have otter.ai and they won't be recorded. Um, and we ask everyone to talk about a specific topic for a few minutes. Uh, and since the introductions that we ran earlier were very, very brief, we thought it might be nice to give you a bit of a chance for discussion, just to talk, why are you here? What are you excited about? What got you into the program? Um, and have you ever worked openly? And has that changed how you think? Um, so if you're looking at the etherpad, line 154 has a few prompts. Um, and my one tip would be don't argue with the questions. So for example, like that last one, how has working openly affected your leadership? If you haven't worked openly, maybe talk about how not working openly has affected your leadership. Um, you figure out a way to make it work and say what, what challenges there might be in that. Um, and then we also have a space for notes. So I will ask that at the start, everyone quickly nominate a note taker. Um, you can all help out. It's nice, but it's more likely to happen if someone is nominated. So nominate a note taker, uh, add names into the etherpad, and maybe just add a few quick bullet points as things uh, come up. So um, in terms of time, we're going to give you all about 10 minutes and we have roughly three people per room. So that means that um, every person gets about three minutes to speak. Pay attention to the time. Make sure that everyone gets the chance to speak or to write. If your room is a written breakout room, you can type into the Zoom chat or you can use the bullet points in the etherpad to chat. 
Um, but the Zoom chat won't go to the whole group. It'll only go to your small group. So don't worry about spamming everyone. Um, I think that's everything. Oh, yes, if you need help, there's an Ask for Help button at the bottom of the screen. Uh, so if you need anything, we can transport a host right into the room to come and save you. Uh, so don't worry, we're here and the rooms will last 10 minutes. Uh, Melly, how's it going? Are you ready? Yeah, we have eight spoken rooms and one with the room with four people, which is, I think that's fine. Um, some people had a preference for either one, so I just assigned them into the spoken rooms. And I guess the us hosts, we can also be mixed in the rooms, right? Yeah, we should always leave at least one host out to, uh, to deal with the latecomers, but yes. Okay. So oh, and just before we that. send everyone, um, just to double check, if you, if, we, if you understood what we need to do, can I have a thumbs up? I've got lots of thumbs, perfect. Okay, I'm not sending you just to sit alone in a room and feel lost. Fantastic, Melly, take it away. <laughs> There you go. I'm going to open the rooms right now and there should be a, a window popping up in your screen saying join. So see you soon. To discuss with your. Sorry, so we are talking about open canvas. Uh, we want to design for openness, think about strategy, look at some example and leave you with a framework that you will be able to take in order to design your own project. So you will see throughout our call that we will highlight different part of the same sentence. So open leaders design and build projects that empower others to collaborate with the inclusive community. And this work is really a lot about designing. This is a framework you saw in the first talk uh, where we have a quadrant where we talk about how to design for understanding, sharing, and participation. In the future call, you will actually go through some different parts of building for, empowering for, and again, thinking about understanding, sharing, and participation. Do you want to get the noodles? Sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> We are hearing a lot of conversation today. Can I remind you all to keep your microphone off so we have only the person speaking being heard. Um, so Open Canvas, in your case, would be a page, a single page where you will think about your project in terms of what are you building, which is product, and who are you building with and for, which is your community. This has been adopted from Lean Canvas, which is quite famous in business or startup companies. So we're going to go through this very twisted pathway of understanding what this canvas means. So we will start with problem. Problem in terms of what is your project trying to solve? It's going to be very short bullet point or even sentences which says one to three problem that you are addressing through your project. You will think about the solution that you have proposed in your project and how will you understand that those goals have, made, have been met. So the key metrics, how will you measure the success of the project? Then we'll go through the resource requirement. In order to solve that problem through the solution that you have designed, what resources would you need? For instance, do you need funding? Do you need platform? Do you need experts? Do you need people to do that work with you? Now from moving away from product and thinking about who we are doing it for and with, we're going to talk about community, meaning that who will be contributing to your profile. This could be people who are your team members, people who you might want to involve in the future. Then you will think about user profile in terms of who will be using this product or solution or community platform event or whatever you're designing, who will be your tar target audience, who will be adopting it. Then you'll think about channels. How are you engaging people? at the de development stage of your project, people who will work with you. Maybe you have a Slack channel or a shared document or a GitHub or whatever that is. Thinking about what those channels are. And similarly, we will think about users. Once you have developed your project, how will you engage your target audience? And finally, you'll be framing one to two sentences of unique value proposition. What are you offering and why are you different? 
And this is also a chance for you to evaluate, have different solution that you're proposing been already created. If they have been created, maybe you should not be building it from the scratch. Maybe you should go to them and collaborate with them. So this is this looks like a one pager, but trust me, you will go through many iteration. And I would invite you to share your example in the Slack channel uh, to discuss your open canvas with others. So now I'm gonna walk through it, uh, hopefully showing you how it may look like in your case. So thinking about product and community, we've already gone through it. So let me skip through very quickly and come back to actual example. So here's one example, and this example is about giving badge. Uh, so if you've seen, uh, it could be a, a repository on GitHub. If you've not seen GitHub repository, maybe it just looks like a picture or logo. So you're thinking about how do we give contributorship badges for people? What is the problem? Problem is that there's a lack of recognition of different types of contribution in academic paper. If you think about a paper, people generally have first authorship, last authorship, middle authorship, but people who are in somewhere in the middle, they don't really get the equal recognition as first and last author. So maybe we can think about giving them recognition through this contribution batch. What is the solution? We give the award batch for people. What is the metrics? number of publishers using that badge. So maybe we go to different publisher and ask them to help us adopt this badging system and number of badges awarded. So how many people we've given it to, how have they feel, uh, how, how have they received it? What is the resource requirement? So obviously someone is thinking about digital batch, so they want to develop it. In order to develop it, they need to understand what hardware is needed, what software is needed, what kind of design principle is needed, and maybe people, publishers, or ORCID who would like to buy in. So if you don't know ORCID, forget for a minute, I will come back to that in one of the future calls. Now thinking about contributors, who would like to contribute? In order to develop a software, I need to have developers from the publishers who I work with or ORCID itself, or maybe just researchers who want to contribute to this. Who would be users? Users would be again, if publishers would like to adopt it. How will we engaging with them? We want to engage with them in different, um, in this case, we want to make sure that their employer, these researchers who would work with us, their employer would let them work on it. And for users, we want to talk about it on Twitter, give presentation, write blog or whatever that it lo looks like. And the unique value proposition is that, that in order to build this badge, um, I need to tell people that issuing this badge will credit your authors in the publishers that we will talk, talk to. Badges for author on academic paper and get author's role on your paper. So this is giving us a very specific insight into what a, a simple example of creating a badge would look like in this open canvas. So there is a open canvas example that you should build for yourself. There is a link shared here, but it's also shared in the etherpad. We'll also send you an email so you have it everywhere that you should be looking into and you would be able to build that. Um, I will finish with that and make sure that this document, I'll show you very quickly. So this document has an example that you would be following. There's a different example here. This is not for you to write in. So in order to use it, you'll have to click on file, make a copy. So you will make an entire presentation copy for yourself and keep that for yourself. So it, be aware that this is not for you to write in. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Again, mute folks who are not speaking at the moment. And if you have any question, please do let me know. Okay, if not, then we just pass it on to, the, to Melly. Yeah, so we're heading into our second round of breakout rooms. Um, you, I think you always taking care of that in, in the background. Uh, so you're going to have five minutes this time to talk about your project uh, mission and vision. There was an assignment for this between last week and this week after your first uh, call with your mentor to come up uh, with a vision statement for your project. Uh, based on a few uh, resources that were shared, 
and also a template document. So that's the idea of the, the current breakout rooms that we're assigning you to, to articulate the big idea, vision, or dream that you would like to achieve working in open, by working open in this project uh, that you are developing here in, in OLS 7, and then try to express your vision in a short format because there isn't going to be a lot of time in the room. And then you could also share it in written form in the notes for the breakout discussions. Um, I guess we are ready to assign you to the rooms if you're always ready to. Could you just do the SW reminder? Um, we have oh, a yes, few people sure. don't. Sure, yeah. sure. So uh, rooms can be either for written exchange or written exchange or for spoken exchange. So if you prefer to be talking, to discussing by talking, uh, please add an S in front of your name so we can organize you better here on Zoom. If you prefer to just write on the chat, not on the etherpad, uh, please just add a W to your name by going on Zoom here, participants. There is a little button when you uh, hover over your name, you can see there's a button saying more and then rename. And then you're, you'll be able to edit your name. Okay, we're good. Uh, shall I open them? Yeah. One comment, one comment before. Um, if uh, you happen to have a uh, fellow room uh, people that um, cannot have connection problems, whatever, try not using the video. So uh, try just talking. So that often helps. Okay, rooms are open. You know, in the in room one, you assign Jeff to there we go. Okay. Um we hope you had the chance to maybe share what you're working on in your project with your uh, roommate. I hope I didn't accidentally pair people like with their same team, that sometimes happens. Um but there's a lot of people, so it can uh, happen. So I think we have one final thing that we're going to be um, talking about, which is creating a roadmap. Because if people can see where you're going, then they know whether or not they want to contribute and be involved with your work. Uh, Paz, are you ready? Take it away. Oh, I was already on it. Uh, okay. So let me share the screen. This is, this is. Okay, I didn't use the nice uh, latest slides, uh, but um, I need we, we need to say something about that maybe at some point, no? Or, or did did we? We should do a blog. We should. We haven't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So, road mapping for open projects. I think the word road mapping is pretty self-explanatory. Maybe like you map the roads you're going to take and the road, uh, the main road to take or the main or the other roads you're going to take and just yeah, make a map of uh, what you're doing and why. And uh, not why maybe, but how you're doing it. So uh, the idea is with this short presentation is to have an idea of how to use a roadmap to plan for work and contribution on your own project, open project, and look at some examples and um, and the assignment related to this presentation is to create and revise and keep revising your roadmap because it's not something you, you do once and then you leave it and that's it. Yeah. So open leaders, and again, open leaders are necessarily the ones that are doing public lectures and just speaking on tech conferences or things like that. Uh, leadership, well, as we understand it in OLS, is, is something that even introverted people can do, like behind the scenes, uh, and it's about building community and, and that. So, Open leaders design and build power uh, projects to that, that empower others to collaborate, not only to uh, become famous or not rich, you know, but uh, <laughs> famous. So the idea is to, is to bring others to collaborate and eventually also provide collaboration to other projects um, and between inclusive communities. 
So this table you already saw it in the in the previous Open Canvas presentation, um, but it, creating a roadmap uh, relates uh, to this uh, key issue of participation and inclusion. So if you have a good roadmap, that uh, it will invite uh, other people, or it will be easier for people to feel invited and to know what to do. Um, so a sorry, this has some like um, grammar issues. This is like. I don't know why I couldn't I couldn't edit it. Many, anyways, so a welcoming space, a welcoming project, uh, makes a good first impression. Uh, so the person who's looking at your project on GitHub or other platform knows uh, they are in the right place or knows if they are not in the right place. So um, first, good impressions. It's like uh, the cover of a book, I guess, <laughs> in a way, and and a. a Again, like this welcoming project or space explains um, to people how they can get involved uh, or how you can get involved in that project in an easier, concise way. Um, and, and in that sense, it lets you know what is happening now, what it will happen next. So it provides like kind of a clear uh, sense of time and, and process. So what goes in a roadmap? Um, first, again, like the cover of the book. A project summary and a welcome. Um, so again, be nice to people and use welcoming words. And how to get involved? Uh, different ways you can get involved. Often in a project, there's not only way to contribute, but many different ways to contribute. And um, so people can choose one. And a timeline again, it's just to know when things are happening or supposed to happen. And so in the project summary. Uh, the idea is that you welcome and you uh, give a, an orientation to your visitors um, so to, to help them understand where you are. And because sometimes they, they get to your roadmap, for example, in GitHub, from other weird place. So it's, it's very important that a kind of a project summary is the first thing. So they don't get lost and, and, and quickly bored and then go away. So again, like having a project summary first in one that is well explained. And I would here, I would say, just uh, create a project summary and, and give it to other people to read, not only to your project uh, team members, but maybe to your dad or to your mom or to your siblings or whoever is not involved in the project and see, do you understand what you're reading? Like, is it clear? If it's not, then go back and, 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 and edit it or make it better. And and the how to get involved part is where uh, you explain exactly in the different ways you can people can contribute. Um, so hopefully there will be things that uh, people can right away start working on, things um, that they can quickly uh, contribute to, and that is a kind of a kind of a fishing people, I guess, uh, uh, and make them making them engage very quickly. So they continue coming back and, and contributing. Um, and point to the documentation that they should check out. Um, documentation is key so people don't make mistakes that, that others have made or that you have made uh, while solving some of the issues uh, of the project with the project or, yeah. So documentation again is key and they should be able to quickly and kind of uh, easy, easily check it out. And then the timeline, um, the start of the roadmap, and I, I, I feel the same. I mean, I feel like this is really the case. Um, people really like to know what's going on. Like people would like to know when the meeting is finishing, that people want to know how long the movie is gonna be. Like people really like, we like uh, time timeframes and timelines. So provide that. Uh, so organize a task to complete your project around milestones. That is important as well. So milestones, help people and yourself and your team keep uh, hopeful and uh, excited, I guess. Uh, so map up as well what you're working on now and what you're gonna be doing next. So again, like people say, I can say, oh yeah, I cannot work on this now, but I can do it next week or next month. And yeah, provide a structure in that way. Not everyone is very structured, but most people like that. And about the milestones, um, milestones are significant turning points or events 
that will help move the project forward. And I don't know, like for example, you completed this or that task, or you uh, involve uh, X number of people, uh, or you interviewed, or you sent uh, X number of um, uh, surveys, something, something like that, or something completely different. But decide with your team or uh, yeah, uh, what are those milestones and why they are important. And don't put that many. So it's not, don't come up with a list of 20, maybe because that would be maybe too much. Uh, not, well, maybe no, 20 maybe, but anyway, 50, it would be too much. So, uh, and, and be clear about the status uh, and the goals, like when you're gonna release a new feature, uh, the minimum viable product, when it's gonna be ready, dates, events, if you're gonna participate on an event, of an event or like a hackathon or, uh, yeah, how long this specific thing is going to take, take short, uh, a short time, medium, uh, sometime, anyway, time frames. Uh, sorry, I'm running, it's just, I always go over presentations. So I, how many, how many time do I have? Uh, so we have six minutes left on the call. I'd like two to wrap up. So you've All right. got so, four. Four, okay. Um, I, I, no, ah. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, and also, I'm going to show an example that you can go and and again and check it out again, just an example and guide yourself. Uh, uh, but include the task to complete for each milestone. So e each milestone will have a list of tasks and be clear and concise again. Like don't write very long tasks. Um, Include information for each task uh, that make it easy for contribution for contributors. What needs to be done? What does success look like? Pointers to get started. Why this task is, task is important, and use that uh, opportunity to reinforce your vision. The things you want to you want to achieve uh, in the long term or in general. Uh, how to store a roadmap um, in in a separate file. Uh, with a uh, markdown or uh, yeah, uh, in the readme file or as an issue in GitHub, uh, in the projects task in GitHub, there's not only one place to, to store it. Uh, but again, it has to be something, a, a place that is easy to find for people. Um, you can access, sorry, you can access this presentation. So you can, you can, you can check this out, these links. I'm going to open one example uh, right now. Um, yeah, this is like the thank you uh, slide. And I'm going to leave this. And, and mm -hmm, just I'm going to stop sharing for one second and then go to the example. Sorry, I hope you don't see I'm very sweaty, sweating a lot. Like, I don't know how it is for uh, the Argentinians there as well, but here is so, so humid and hot. Um, yes, this one, All right. Here. So, um, this is, uh, this is for example, a, an example of a roadmap from all this. So you can see like a very short summary at the beginning, concise, how to get involved next, uh, and then the timeline you know, with this very kind of cute kind of uh, things. Uh, so you can, you know, uh, click and, and, you know, like a complete like tasks. So um, milestones like applications and tasks related to them. Um, so that, you know, it has, ha doesn't have to be super, super huge and big. So also you can also see the, 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 the timeline, like when is this happening and right. So that's it. Thank you. Stop sharing. Thank you, Faz. Um, I always enjoy watching presentations, even ones I've seen a hundred times, um, uh, just because it always has a different angle from different people. Um, I am Paz. I can be Paz. I am peaceful. <laughs> okay. Um, wow. If that's too cold. Just say no. Just like walk out and tell the weather minus 18. No. All right. Uh, we have to wrap up so that you can go and do your amazing things with your day. 
Um, so folks, we like to name our cohorts. For some reason, we didn't name the last one. OLS 6 was the nameless cohort. This is not happening this time. Think of some beautiful words, names that you might want. In the past, we've had open sea. We've had hope. We've had the masked cohort. Can you guess when that one was? Um, and then we've had, um, oh, just, no, what's, no, I want to say discovery, but it's not that. <laughs> Perseverance. There we go. The Mars Rover. Um, we, we've had so many beautiful cohort names. Think of some. Think what you might like. If you want to add an idea in the etherpad, the place to add it is line 289. But we will poke you in Slack and we'll poke you in your emails and we'll give you some surveys until we have some beautiful, amazing, inspiring name that we can share for this cohort. Um, so all the links you need are in that etherpad. They're also on the website um, in the schedule. So you should be able to find everything you need when it comes to assignments, when it comes to meeting with your mentor. Um, if you have had a scenario where your mentee hasn't shown up or your mentor hasn't shown up, don't panic. Email team at openlifesci.org. Come and speak to us. Ask for help. We will figure out what's going on. We will save your mentor. We will save your mentee and we will fix it all. Um, I think we should wrap up now. It has been such a delight to see all of you. Have a beautiful day. Come to as many cohort calls as you can. Um, we don't want you to wake up in the middle of the night or anything. Don't come when you're sick. But if you can come, come. And if you can't, we're on YouTube. Um, be lovely, my friends. And, and, and in the cafeteria and, or, and co-working on Friday. So you can also come yes. to those. Come hang out. We are chill people. And we will see you later. Okay. Bye-bye.